fun. Following you two was great. I learned so much. Um, it's really great to be here. Thank you, Danielle. Um, so I, this event is about designing for access, but I know that in order to even design, um, to even get to the point of putting ideas down on the table, we, we need safe spaces and we need um, people that understand us and want us to be there. Um, and so today I wanted to talk about 10 tips for working with non-binary people as a non-binary person um, that's been out living as a non-binary person for about three years. Um, I'm learning every single day uh, what it means to live um, in this world in an unconventional um, gender or non-gender. Um, so, <laughs> so I learned two seemingly inc incongruent things in the space of three minutes. The first one was Apple now has a new, uh, has a gender neutral option for almost every human emoji, which is pretty cool because, you know, I, I like to use emojis. I think everybody does. Um, I tried to get ones with, of color, but I couldn't. So we have to stick with the yellow ones right now. So, um, but I also learned that 52% of LGBTQ folks in the US live in states where they can be discriminated against for being LGBTQ. So those two things together um, gave me pause. So although California is one of 21 states that have laws protecting people in the workplace from being fired, not hired, or discriminated against based on gender identity or sexual orientation, according to a Business Insider report, almost 40% of LGBTQ tech employees in Silicon Valley say that they witness homophobic behavior in the workplace. Now, it made me realize that even though we're seeing some strides in inclusion, we're also seeing more strides in, ex strides in exclusion. And we all know that given the current climate we're in right now. Um, and I'm from the UK, so it's like on both ends anyway. Um, <laughs> It's like, God. So <laughs> I believe wholeheartedly in safe work environments. Safe to me may mean something different to you. And so that's why I believe it's important. I, oh man, see this slide was for the 40% of people in Silicon Valley that feel, <laughs> um, that experience homophobia in the workplace. So anyway. Um, I believe wholeheartedly in safe work environments. Safe to me may mean something different to you. And so that's why I believe it's important for everyone to get, res to get heard and respected for who they are. So, therefore I came up with 10 ways that we can all be deliberate in our actions with each other so that we can nurture and sustain environments for anyone to shine. Allow me to offer some ways that we can treat our non-binary colleagues and employees with respect. Number one, offer your pronouns. Make no assumptions. A friendly, non-judgmental way to get to know someone is to offer your pronouns. Hi, Charlie, my name is so-and-so. My pronouns are he and him. What are yours? That to me is safe. I know I'm, I'm in the presence of someone who isn't gonna harm me. Number two, if you mess up on pronouns, keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's really uncomfortable for everyone if you start apologizing <laughs> and saying how sorry you are. When people quickly correct themselves to me, um, when talking to me, without making it a big deal, it, it feels nice. And I, and I see the effort because we all mess up. It's, we're human. I mess up. I'm in the mirror talking to myself. I mess up, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I keep it moving. <laughs> Number three, make no assumptions. I said this earlier. Um, non-binary folks come in all forms. You literally cannot tell someone is non-binary. The same goes for any gender. Assuming gender from clothes is going wildly out of fashion, so I would, I would encourage you not to do it. Um, because someone wearing a suit um, with a tie and a blazer and chunky black shoes doesn't make them a man. And someone wearing a skirt with heels and a delicate satin vest doesn't make them 
a woman. So make no assumptions, because you might find yourself embarrassed. So number four, don't ask about genitals and body parts. <laughs> I mean, it, asking about genitals is an obvious no-no, right? <laughs> but it's not, because people do it. <laughs> For one, it's sexual harassment. Um, and two, genitals don't determine gender. You do. Number five, use gender neutral terms when speaking generally. I often hear male or female, boy or girl, man or woman, ladies or gentlemen, and each time I hear a little bit inside. It's simply erasure. And there is so much binarism entrenched in bureaucracy as it is. So please do us a favor and just think before you speak. Like there are so many words in the English, English language. I'm just talking about the English language right now. Um, <laughs> that we can choose. Um, and to reinforce they, that they can be used as a single pronoun, even though we've been saying it for a long time, Merriam-Webster did just make it official, so yeah. Number six, one non-binary person cannot speak for all non-binary people. I experienced this as a black biracial person in the workplace, and this is the same. I couldn't answer for every black biracial person then, and I can't answer for every non-binary person now. My experience is mine, theirs is theirs. <coughs> Don't put us in a box. Okay, number seven, be nice. <laughs> Simple, um, but you know, often non-binary people are getting so much hate and nastiness, nastiness outside from the general public, and just providing a friendly and kind atmosphere at work makes such a difference. It is the difference between life and death for so many people. Number eight, listen. Like with any topic you're not, you're not an expert on, listen to the ones who are the people who live it. If non-binary folks are generous enough to share their experience with you, listen, it's a privilege. And you could learn way more than any textbook can teach you, because we're probably not in any textbook. But don't go bombarding us with every question you have, because Google is your friend. If I feel that I could help clarify something, I will. I don't mind. But I don't care about the questions you're dying to ask. If I'm at work, I'm just trying to work. Oh. Number nine, are there gender neutral bathrooms available? I was so happy today when I came in and I went to the bathroom, it was like gender neutral. I was like, yay, thank you. Um, that just made my evening. It was huge. Um, and so are there gender neutral bathrooms at your workplace? We can often feel erasure when confronting binary bathrooms. A gender neutral bathroom is imperative and it's fair. If you can, make it available, and if, and if you can't, advocate for it. Because even if you don't think you know any non-binary people, you probably do, and they're probably just not saying anything. And actually, there's a great talk, TED Talk, by Ivan Coyote. I think I said that right. Um, if you type in TED LGBT, this person talks about the, the need for gender-neutral bathrooms. I would recommend that. And number 10, Google is an excellent source for learning, learning how to be an ally. Your non-binary your non coworker isn't. Often we have to be dictionaries and search engines for people's questions, and it just gets tiring and annoying. So why am I telling you all of this? Um, too often, my non-binary identity is dismissed, dismissed misconstrued, or contested. I have been living as a non-binary person for three years now. At first, it took me a long time to undo the internalized transphobia I had inside of me. I read books, searched out documentaries, I cut my hair, played with my style, I changed my pronouns, albeit tentatively, and I came out to my family as queer, the first social step in relinquishing cis-normativity cis -normativity and heteronormativity. Three years later, I am as sure as myself as I can be right now. I'm living quite gender fluid. At work, my colleagues have seen me change and have adapted to my request for correct pronoun usage. Do they mess up? Of course. But I'm learning to understand that we humans are really complex and we mess up, as do I. Um, so I can actually laugh about it. 
it's different if someone is being obviously hostile to me, which I have also experienced. So yesterday, a person came in looking for a newspaper. I work in a bookstore. Um, and I said, I don't have it, and they walked away. They came back a few minutes later, and they said, are you the lady I spoke to about the newspapers? I was like, mm, no, that can't be me. <laughs> and my colleague was standing there. She's a cis woman, and, she, and I said, oh, it must have been her. And she was looking at me very confused. So when it was just me and my colleague left, and the person had gone, I said, oh, it was me they were talking about. But my colleague laughed, and I continued. And I said, I find the public so strange. Sometimes they say, hello, sir. Sometimes they say, hello, ma'am. Sometimes they look at me like I'm a shapeshifter. Are you a boy or a girl? And which is, I deal with it at the time. But the realization I came to was that Although I can come across as any gender, that wasn't a surprise for me. My, my non-binary partner had been t saying these things to me for the time we've been together. So I wasn't surprised that I would experience this. But what did stand out to me was that I was experiencing a mental shift, that when somebody said lady or ma'am or sir to me, I, I didn't, I realized that my non-binary identity was at the front of my mind, and instead of it being at the back of my mind. And so by, by the front of my mind, I mean that I didn't allow the patron's misgendering of me to stay front and center. Immediately, I understood that I couldn't be the lady they were talking about, even though I was the person they were talking about. I automatically had a mirror in front of me. And I think that's due to the work that I've been doing. I know that's due to the work I've been doing on myself, um, that it gives me thicker skin when I go out there. People are going to make mistakes. People are going to not understand me. But does that change who I know I am? No. And that was the realization I came to, which was huge. So I believe that being true to oneself is something to nurture, something to explore, something to give honest appreciation to. Therefore, despite our strides in inclusion and our strides in exclusion, I believe we can all do better in the workplace to spend, I believe we can all do better in the place we spend the second most hours of our days at work. And uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you.